بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Today, inshallah, we'll be starting with one of the very important attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we partially talked about in one of our previous sessions, and that is As-Sami' subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I mentioned about two or three weeks ago, that there are seven attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are considered to be must for every living being to have these qualities in order for that person to be a perfect person. Any defect in any of these seven attributes or these seven qualities is a defect in that person. We will be covering two of those in today's session, inshallah, as-sami' and al-basir. Both of these are considered to be attributes and qualities for perfection. And any defect in these qualities, in these attributes, is a defect in that person. For example, if there is a person who cannot hear, or a person who hears but not properly, this is a defect within that person. So summer is one of the qualities of perfection and without it, no person can be a perfect being. Not to talk about having a God that would not be able to, be able to hear. This is why Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, when he asked his nation, his people, هَلْ يَسْمَعُونَكُمْ إِسْتَدْعُونَ do these idols hear you when you call them? It was a very important question. هَلْ يَسْمَعُونَكُمْ إِثْتَدْعُونَ Can they hear you the time you call them? If they cannot hear you, then it's better to even worship a human being, because at least a human being can hear you. So human beings are better than these idols that you worship. In fact, in that sense, you may say, Animals are better than these idols that they worship. At least animals, although they cannot recognize the voice, they cannot recognize the sound in most of the cases, but still they can hear. They can hear the person calling or shouting. The shepherds, they shout at their gods, at their cattle. And they may say a lot of things that the animals don't understand, but they know what he wants from us. These idols, they can't even hear that much. Can they hear you when you call them? So, hearing is must for a person to be perfect. And depending on how much defect there is in hearing, this is how much defect there is in that person. And this is why, when a person cannot hear properly, starts having a lot of difficulties. Hearing is one of the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as soon as starts getting weak, the person starts facing a lot of hardships and difficulties. Someone said something and he heard half of the thing. Didn't hear the whole thing. But even with the perfect hearing the human beings have, still our hearing is defective. With the most perfect hearing we have, our there, is, there are a lot of defects in it. For example, there are so many things around us that, that can prevent us from hearing. People standing outside of the masjid, they cannot hear what's going inside of the masjid at this time. People that are on the distance of some miles from here, they cannot hear what's happening in the masjid. When we go to sleep, it's gone. Most of us may not hear anything. 
Some of us may be able to have a little, the sleep is not that heavy, so we may be able to wake up on some slight sounds, but still the hearing fails at certain point. So there are a lot of defects with our, our hearings. Limited hearing on how far of a distance you can hear from, what can get you to hear, if there are a lot of noises we cannot hear, and if there are a lot of sounds around, we will not be able to hear all of them at the same time. If all the people in this masjid will start talking at the same time, we won't be able to hear everyone in the masjid. We won't know what each and every person is saying. So there are a lot of defects with our hearing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we call him a sami' this is what a sami' means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one that is all hearing. He hears everything at all times. No voice can prevent him from hearing another voice. No sound can prevent him from hearing another sound. Nothing in this world can prevent him from hearing anything that is going around. Slightest sound that occurs anywhere in the world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears that. Sometimes because of having these small ears, we think that we can hear a lot. Oh yeah, I know everything. Subhanallah, this is a human being with these small ears that feels that I really can hear everything. But now we can really see and understand how limited our hearing is and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no limits to it. There are no limits and nothing that can prevent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from hearing any sound that takes place in this earth. In fact, there are many <coughs> sounds that we don't even consider it a sound. We don't even consider that as something that can be heard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears that also. A simple example that we find in Quran al Karim. Sayyidina Yunus alayhi salatu was salam, swallowed by a well. He is in the depth of the oceans, inside the stomach of a well, and he prays, La ilaha illa anta subhanak, inni kuntu min al zalimin. Which human being can hear that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears even a sound that we normally may not even consider that there was a sound there. In fact, any sound in the depth of the ocean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears that also. And now, when we look at our angle, our understanding of a sound may be a little different than what really are the things that can be heard. There's, there may be a lot of things that we don't even consider those things in existence as a sound, but they, they are, there is some sound there. And they have to be heard. Someone has to hear those sounds also. For example, when a person is doing some zulm or a fish in the depth of the ocean is being hurt. Don't we think that that fish has a rub and recognize its rub? Even the fish recognize that it has a rub. And when there is something that happens to the fish, even that fish turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like we turn to Allah, every animal turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When a zulm is being done, for example, to even a fish, that fish turns to Allah and prays to Allah. We consider that animal soundless, doesn't make no noise, no sounds, you can't hear it. But Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala hears those fish also in the depth of the ocean. He is a Samir. None of his creatures is neglected. None of his creatures would feel that I don't know who to pray to because I don't have a voice. At a time when a person lo loses his voice, 
there is someone that can hear even what he goes through in his heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Samir. He's such a Samir that no creature of his is being neglected and can ever feel that there is no one to hear me. Or because I have been created in such a way that I don't have a sound, I don't have a voice. So therefore, I cannot pray to my Lord. Every creature knows that it can turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is there to hear it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran al kareem that if you pray to Allah, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ ادْعُونِي يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord says, pray to me, I will answer your prayer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as sami' subhanahu wa ta'ala who hears everything. There are so many sounds around there because of our defective ears. This is one of the defects of our ears that the sound is there, we cannot hear it. And therefore, you take a small radio, turn it on, and you start hearing a lot of things there. Where all of this voice is coming from? Is it already recorded in this radio? No. It's a sound that is in the air, but our ears cannot catch the sound. So we see that there is a special machine that needs that we need to cage that, so that sound. And then that machine can really catch it and transfer it in a form that we can hear it. So there are a lot of forms of sounds that me and you cannot hear. But Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is showing us how, what type of Samir he is, just a little bit of understanding of it. That we see, that if this radio can catch a sound from the air, how many of these sounds we are missing and they are around us, they are hitting us, they are hitting our ears, we can't hear them. If Rabb would be like that, who cannot hear, who misses so many of these sounds, most of his creatures will be, his, will be neglected. Most of the people will be crying and he would be busy hearing some other sounds. But with all of these machinery that we have developed, it cannot get all the sounds at the same time. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala hears all the sounds. This radio that we have, the TV that we have, it may hear the sound that is in the air, but when you talk, it doesn't get it. It needs to have a special channel and connection. Then subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created different type of animals that hear different things. Depending on the type of hearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided the animals with, some of them would hear only in the water, just like we hear on the, only in the land. We cannot hear when we are in the depth of the water. Our ears do not function there. Same thing, there are animals that can hear only in the water. You bring them out, they cannot hear. And there are animals that can hear at both places. They hear out, they hear inside. If this is the hearing that we know about animals, what would be the hearing of angels? We don't know. And Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us if he has created so many different type of hearings in this world. Imagine what type of hearing Rabbul Alameen himself might have. This is just to have a little understanding of as Samir subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gave those fish the hearing that they have, they can hear in the water. He gave us the hearing that we have. Some of the animals, they can hear things from far distances. Some of the animals, they cannot hear at all. 
they have to use some our senses to make up for that hearing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided different creatures with different type of hearing and this shows a Sami' subhanahu wa ta'ala who really has the knowledge of all of these type of hearings. He created all of these type of hearings and his Sami' subhanahu wa ta'ala is such that nothing can prevent him from hearing anything and any sound in the world. All the sound, every sound that occurs anywhere in the world, he hears all of them at the same time. Is not that any of these voices will hear will prevent him from hearing another voice. Is not that hearing to some people will prevent him from hearing some others. This was the problem with many of the kuffar with their iman. They believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But their thinking was, yes Allah is there, but we see such a huge world. So many people in the world, they all pray to God at the same time. How can He hear all of us at the same time? So they thought there is defect with God in His hearing, and therefore they chose to have idol, so they can talk to the idol who would hear them, and then when God is free, this idol would talk, would talk to God. This was the concept behind having these idols and different objects to be worshipped. They knew that Allah is there. They knew that even these idols, they have a God above them. As them who created the heaven and the earth, they will say Allah. As them who created you, they will say Allah. So it's not that they thought these are the ones who created us. It's not that they thought that these idols created anything in this universe. It's only that God needs help. See how important this attribute is for us to realize a Samia is the one who hears us at any time at all times and no sound can prevent him from hearing another sound. He can hear every creature of his throughout the universe wherever they may be at all times. So when they thought that the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not be able, they were guessing Allah on themselves when Ayyazubillah. Because after all human beings are very limited. If we look at our hearing, we know that you can hear only if we have these ears. If these ears are not there, it's blocked. There are no holes over here. We won't be able to hear. So they thought, the kuffar, when they started guessing Allah on themselves, they thought even God may have some ears to hear with. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need ears to hear. He does not depend on anything. How does he hear? That's only he knows. But it's not that he would have ears like ours. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Samia, He hears everything. He hears everything at all times. In fact, sometimes He gives us the type of hearing, He gives people the type of hearing that for us may be totally unbelievable. Umar radiallahu anhu is giving the khutbah in the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he calls, Al Jabal Al Jabal Ya Sariya, Sariya, look towards the mountain, look towards the mountain. Who is the Sariya? He was the commander in chief for the Muslim armies that were fighting the enemies in Syria. Umar radiallahu anhu is standing in the member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the masjid of Rasulullah in Medina Munawwara, and he sees what's happening over there. And he calls them and Sariya hears Omar calling him. Where did they get this from? Of course, for some people, these things may sound like impossible. But we see it nowadays. You have a security camera somewhere in the world sitting on the internet. You can see and hear what's happening in that room from anywhere in the world. If human beings can create something like this. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot provide with that type of power of hearing. Those were the people who knew anything that happens in the world is under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has the power over doing everything. Their iman on this was such strong, so strong that nothing prevented them from doing what they wanted to do because of that iman. Oh, if I say, I know that I'm not the one who would get my voice to Sariah, Allah would do it. And is there anything impossible for Allah? <laughs> Today, I don't doubt my internet, I don't doubt my phone. I'm talking to someone that's sitting thousands of miles away from here. I, can, I know that I can talk to anyone any, in any part of the world because I have a phone. If I have so much trust on my, in my phone, these people's Sahaba Ridwanullahi Ali Majma'in's Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was far greater than what we would have in anything else that is, that is with us. So they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can show him what's happening there too. For us, sometimes, when we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, during dua, it may sound, am I asking for too much? I mean, we may even question ourselves. I think, I think now this is too much. I, just stop, I should stop at this point now. It's only limiting the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is too much? And it's for who? What is it that he cannot do? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the power. And here Umar radiallahu anhu in Medina Munawara, he hears Sariya, uh, he, he talks to Sariya that is in Syria. And we see it with our technology that nothing is too difficult or impossible anymore. But what the difference is, we trust these machines and their trust was in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran al-Kareem, وَإِن تَجْهَرْ بِالْقَوْلِ فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى In other ayahs, السِّرَّ وَالنَّجْوَى That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can hear your secret, فَإِنَّهُ يَسْمَعُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى He knows the secret and what is more hidden than the secrets. What is more hidden than the secrets? Secret is, you whisper to someone in his ear, this is a secret. This is sir. What is akhfa? More hidden than a sir. This is when you talk to your soul. When we talk to our souls of things that no one knows. But we are talking to our souls. There are things going in our mind and we are saying something to our souls. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even knows that. He hears even that voice that is going within our soul that we cannot hear it ourselves. Ya'lam sir wa akhfa. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a samia subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he hears all of his creatures, he hears everything and nothing prevents him from hearing anything. Once we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a samir what is the benefit? Of course, there could be a lot of benefits by connecting our souls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through any of his attributes. But there are two main benefits that we really would gain after hearing what does a Samir means and knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Samir. Two great benefits. Number one, a person will not say anything that he doesn't want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hear it from him. Anything that we feel that is wrong for me to say in the presence of Allah, I know Allah is Samir, so I better not say it. If I'm afraid to say something in your presence because I don't want to hear these type of things from me, I may be able to say them out of this place. I'll go home and say them about you or about anyone else. When a person knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Samir, nothing that I would say won't be heard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
each and everything that I will utter with this tongue, it will be heard by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he's a Samir, as some of the Mufassirin have narrated. A scholar went to visit another one, another scholar, who was extremely sick. And because of the pain he was going through, he was making some noise. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. So he asked him, the sound that you are making, is it a complaint? Because Allah is hearing it. I'm sure the story is much higher than our level. We are just thinking of what does it mean now? Can't we even say, ah? Oh. <laughs> Those were the people who would say, don't say, ah, oh, say Allah. Because this ah oh, could be a complaint that I'm in pain. When you say Allah, then is a call. You are calling the one who can help you. So even these type of sounds won't be heard from a person who realizes as Samir subhanahu wa ta'ala is always hearing him. This is one benefit. The second benefit is when we realize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Samir, then we will always be turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to pray to Him, to beg Him for all of our needs. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Samir, so let's talk to Allah. When I know that you're here to, you're, you're, you're here to listen to me, you're willing to uh, uh, fulfill my needs, you're there to help me. So of course, I will not be ignoring you, I will say, at least let me talk to Him. He's here for me. Once we know that As-Sami'a subhanahu wa ta'ala is there for me, and he hears me, and at this time, he is really listening to me, he is hearing to what I have to say, and he is ready to help me. What's the possibility for me to turn away from him and go to anyone else? This is if the connection is there with As-Sami'a subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many times we find ourselves in a situation where we think, I don't know who to talk to. Of course, as human beings, we may not need a person like us to talk to. But if the connection with the Samir subhanahu wa ta'ala is there, we would first talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I really love the wordings of a hadith narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha. Who says Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came home night time, he was tired. He laid down in the bed and after a short time he says to me, Ya Aisha, da'ini unaji rabbi. Aisha, let me get up because I want to talk to my Lord. Munaja means when you talk to someone in his ear. When you whisper to someone in his ear, which means showing the closeness to the person, trust in that person. He says, Da'ini unaji rabbi. Let me get up to talk to my Lord. I feel like talking to Allah. I'm tired, so I want to talk to Allah. I was disturbed by all the kuffar throughout the day. I want to talk to Allah. Da'ini unaji rabbi. Let me get up and talk to my Lord. This is the benefit of having that connection with a Samir subhanahu wa ta'ala that you always want to talk to a Samir subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why there are so many scholars of Islam that we read about them when they used to read Quran. They used to read it in such a way with such a feeling as they are reading it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is a fact, but we don't realize it. For me, I may be reading it to you, or reading it to myself. But when they used to recite Quran, they were reciting it as if they are reciting it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, this is one of the adab of the recitation of Quran mentioned in the uh, books of adab, of how to recite Quran. What is the other of the recitation of Quran? One of the other is... Keep in mind 
that you are reciting it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening to your recitation. And there is a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ma adhina Allahu li shay, kama adhina li nabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like to listen to anything as much as he likes to hear a prophet of Allah who is reciting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears us when we are reciting it. And even the prophets of Allah were reciting it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even as we are reciting it, reciting it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when we are leading the salah, the imam when he's leading the salah, he's not reciting it to me and you. He's reciting it to Allah. When we are reciting it by our souls, we are not just reciting it to our souls. We are reciting it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is the benefit of having that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a sami'a subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person realizes Allah is hearing me. Subhanallah, imagine what a feeling a person would have when you are by yourself. And you're saying, just in your heart it may be, or maybe just with a very low voice, you're saying, subhanallah, Allah. Alhamdulillah. And you know that the one that is that you're talking to is hearing you. He is there with you. And he's hearing you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he heard Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu reciting Quran in a very low pitch during Salat al Tahajjud, he asked him, Abu Bakr, why are you reciting it so low? Look at the words of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. As Muhaddisin have explained that these words of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu show the great connection he had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the strong connection he had established with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he says to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, the reason I was reciting Quran with such a low pitch, uh, with such a low voice, Ya Rasulullah, asma'tu man najayit, the one that I was whispering to, he was hearing me. The one I was whispering to, Manajay, the one I was whispering to, he is hearing me. So, this is a Samir subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the benefit of having that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Samir realizing Allah is a Samir subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting ourselves to a Samir subhanahu wa ta'ala that the person will always be praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be connecting himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by talking to Allah, by praying to Allah. Now, with this, let me just ask you a question. Do you feel there is any situation in the world, any situation in the world, that a human being can put into that situation where he cannot talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As long as the person is alive, there is no way in the world that anyone can prevent us from talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let the whole world decide to leave us alone, not to talk to us, and they build as thick of walls as possible to put us inside those walls and arrest us in there and to keep us by ourselves secluded. No one, no hear, no voice would come to us, and our voice no one get, get nowhere else. But still, we can talk to us, Samia Subhanahu wa Taala. He is there to hear us. Now, how can a mu'min, a person of iman, would ever lose this connection with Allah and would ever give up this type of relationship and connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that Allah is Samia subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah, no matter what happens to me in the world, I can talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time. So this is a great benefit of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a Samia and then connecting ourselves to Him as a Samia subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we always talk to Him, especially in normal situations, have the habit of talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means praying to Allah, reciting the words of Allah, reciting the subhanahu to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah. Ya Allah, I thank you. Talk to Allah. Ya Allah, I admire you. Ya Allah, I pray to you. Talk to Allah, because He's there to hear us. When a person gets himself used to talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of ease, then when we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the time of difficulties and hardships, then those are also heard and that voice is always recognized that this is the voice that always 
is there. This, this person always prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that comes after a samia is al-basir subhanahu wa ta'ala. The all-seeing, the one that sees everything at all times. He doesn't need a light to see. He doesn't need anything else to see. When we look at his creatures, subhanAllah, there are some animals that can see only when it's dark. They don't see during the daytime. And there are some who see only during the daytime. Some who see in both situations, whether is light, there is light or is dark, they can see in both situations. And we may think that type of eyesight may be very expensive to buy the eyesight that can see at both times, daytime and nighttime. If they really would bring some time of those glasses, they will be expensive. But you see, these small mice, rats, they have the sight. They see night time in the darkness of the night and they see during the daytime also. They don't need a light to see, but they see during the light time, daytime too. With such a creature that we have no value for it. In fact, you don't want to see it. <laughs> but look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that anyway. This type of eyesight that can see without light, that can see with light, doesn't need the light to see. And the light doesn't prevent that animal from seeing. Subhanallah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us. That is not because it was expensive, I didn't give it to human beings. Now you need to buy it. No, it's according to the need. According to the need of the human, according to the need of all creatures, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us different things. There are some animals that can see in the water, some that can see out of the land. Some can see at both places. With all of these different type of eyesight, of course we can see Al-Basir subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's providing all of these creatures with these different type of eyesight. How much he is able to see. And what can prevent him from seeing if he's giving different type of creatures, these different type of eyesight, he is creating that type of eyesight for them where they can see in the water and outside. He's giving them the type of eyesight where they don't even need a light to see with. You think he would limit himself? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no limit. So nothing can prevent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from seeing it again. This is one of those attributes that are needed for a perfection. No human being can be a complete human being. No creature can be perfect without having the eyesight. A person who is blind, there is a defect. Weak eyesight, there is that much weakness there. And of course, again with the most perfect eyesight we may have, there are so many things that will prevent us from seeing. We all know and understand how limited our eyesight is. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a, a, again, if a person is not able to see something at any time, this is a defect. Basr, have being a basir, it's a perfect quality. The better eyesight, the more the better, the most uh, the more perfect the person is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such a basir that nothing can be hidden from him anywhere in the universe. Nothing can be hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to hide it in the darkness of the night. So what? He is there to watch it. He can see everything. He doesn't need the light to see. Sometime, if for children we may use the example to tell them, look, in the darkness of the night, and it's in the jungle where there is no light around, and then the, there is a black rock in the jungle, and there is a black small ant that is walking on that rock, black rock in the darkness of the night, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to see that ant walking in the jungle. For us, as extreme of an example as it may, may, it may sound, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who doesn't need the light to see, doesn't need a color to see, then of course this example really means nothing. Because he's al basir subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't need a color over there to see, he doesn't need a light to see, he doesn't need a size to see. For us, sizes will make difference. For him, any size won't make diff no difference. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al basir subhanahu wa ta'ala who sees all creatures at all times. Seeing some does not prevent him from seeing others. And now we can see that with all of these different type of telescopes, microscopes, when we are able to see things, this seeing is really nothing. These, all of these things are created. And then having these different type of security cameras, where you can sit anywhere in the world and see it. If we can make those type of things with a satellite, if we can have a satellite that can be above the earth and see what's happening in the world, uh, on, on this earth, keep on taking pictures of any place, any time, if we can create something like this, then imagine Al Basir subhanahu wa ta'ala when he's watching everything. How can things be hidden from him? Fourteen hundred years ago, Quran <coughs> says uses the word as sami al basir, as sami al basir, again and again, repeatedly uses this word. We really paid no attention to it. Until when we were told, be very careful when you speak. Because there could be any devices anywhere. Nowadays there are minute devices. That you just put it anywhere and anyone can hear you from miles away. Your picture can be taken wherever you may be. So we started getting scared. Now we have to be careful. Everyone in the world is trying to be careful because, I don't know, there might be a camera over here taking my picture. We were told long time before this that a Sami al-Basir is seeing you, he is hearing you, he is watching you. If we would have just followed those rules, we would not be scared of anything else. Because that's already there. He is hearing us, he is watching us. I'm not supposed to do anything wrong anyway. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. I'm not supposed to say anything wrong anyway. Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing me. But even now, when we are scared, we may be not saying certain things that we say, that we think we don't want some people to hear us. It's still backbiting, cursing, and all the other things that we are not supposed to utter with our tongues, still they are going on because we didn't realize that as Samia subhanahu wa ta'ala is hearing us and still we are doing so many of the haram that Al-Basir subhanahu wa ta'ala have prevented for us from doing. Because it's only because we don't really remind our souls, don't remember that Al-Basir is watching me, my, my pictures is being taken at this time. Someone is sitting on the other side to see what's happening here. Tomorrow, all of this will be presented as a witness against me in that court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every action of mine is being recorded. Whatever I say is being recorded. Whatever I do is being recorded. And tomorrow, the whole thing will be played back. If we know that, imagine how careful we would be. Any time when a person thinks of committing a haram, let me commit this haram at this time. Let me watch this at this time. Right away we need to remind ourselves that this is being recorded. There is a camera over there that, can record, that would record everything and then I will be taken to court tomorrow and 
all of this will be played back as a witness against me. So if this is good, let me do it. If not, if it's, I don't want this to be presented against me tomorrow, then I better avoid it. This will be a beautiful way of preventing ourselves from falling into a sin. Whenever a feeling of committing haram comes, just remind ourselves of Sami al-Basir subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is recording everything. He is there to see, he is watching me, and he is recording everything, and he is going to play it back tomorrow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Basir subhanahu wa ta'ala watches each and every action of human being. Nothing can be hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And very amazing part that we need to remind ourselves, something that we all read it a lot. اليَوْمَ نَخْتِمُ عَلَىٰ أَفْوَاهِهِمْ وَتُكَلِّمُنَا أَيْدِيهِمْ وَتَشْهَدُ أَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And in another ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ يَوْمَ تَشْهَدُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَلْسِنَتُهُمْ وَأَيْدِيهِمْ وَأَرْجُلُهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And, وَقَالُوا لِجُنُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا This is telling us that these cameras, these security cameras, the surveillance cameras that are there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that I placed some of these cameras in your skin. I placed these cameras in your hands, in your eyes, in your ears. They are recording everything that you do. These cameras are not out there that are recording everything. They are in our skin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on the day of judgment, the person will be talking to the skin. وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا They will ask their skin, how come you witnessed against me? The skin is recording everything. And tomorrow, when the person is in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be judged for all of the deeds, these skins will speak up. So, Al-Basir subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only that he's watching us, he even made, he gave our skin some type of sense that they watch everything that we do and they record everything that we do. Our eyes, they're recording, not only that they see, they record everything that is being done. Our hands, they will speak. Our feet will speak. Each and every part of the body will speak. They have these recording devices. Imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in this universe. We trusted everyone else when they're telling us, look, there could be any recording device here. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us this long time before anyone would even imagine, could imagine that they could be these type of recording devices. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, I have placed these recording devices in your skin. They are recording each and everything that you do. If no one will catch you in this world, no one will be able to present no witness against you in this world. Anything wrong that you would do, your own parts of the body and your own skin will witness against you on the day of judgment for it. Imagine how careful a mu'min has to be. How careful of a life we need to live in this world, knowing that everything is being watched, everything is being recorded, Al-Basir subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing everything, so I, be, I better be careful not to commit any haram, not to harm anyone, not to do wrong to anyone, not to do anything that I'm not supposed to do according to the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all a very strong connection with himself, with his soul, and give us tawfir to understand his attributes and connect our souls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his attributes and names. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين The question is, uh, as we just heard in the light of Quran, that everything is getting recorded. So why all of these recordings are needed if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears everything? Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
was sitting amongst Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een and he smiled. Then he said to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, don't you ask me why did I smile? He said, tell us Ya Rasulullah, why did you smile? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I smiled as I was just informed of a situation of a person who will be presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for questioning regarding all of his deeds, regarding his a'mal in this dunya. And he will see his records are full of sins. So this person will try to be very smart. And now he goes to the court and he says, okay, let me deal with the situation. I know what to do. So he goes into the court and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, look, this is what you have done with all of these wrongdoings. You know what you deserve. He says, Ya Allah, I don't know who wrote all of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the angels. Angels, come up. Tell him what you have seen him doing. And the angels will start witnessing, Ya Allah, I don't know what they're talking about. So what do you want now? Ya Allah, I don't accept these witnesses against me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, okay, we'll get another witness. That is the time when his mouth will be sealed and now different parts of the body will start speaking. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open, will take the seal of his mouth so this is what Allah says in surahs, where He will be saying to the skin, وَقَالُوا لِجُلُودِهِمْ لِمَا شَهِدْتُمْ عَلَيْنَا He will be so upset with His own skin, why did you witness against me? This is when it will be needed. التصدر هو التكسر يعني لرأيته خاشع يعني عاجز ومتصدع يعني يتكسر من خشة الله سبحانه وتعالى. The question was about one of the words of Quran, what does it mean? And I just told him that the meaning of the word. Let's pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa alhamdulika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka Allahumma wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fi al-akhirati hasanatan wa qina azab al-nar. وقنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الفقر وقنا فتنة المسيح الدجال اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم قنا عذابك يوم تجمع عبادك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واهد جميع المسلمين والمسلمات ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب اللهم أجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من خز الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم قنا عذابك يوم تجمع عبادك اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إنا نسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في ديننا ودنيانا وآخرتنا اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تبارك وتعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين آمين يا رب العالمين